Welcome to At the Public Library, the news and information program about the San Francisco Public Library System. This month's show features a new literary events calendar, a look at the current main library exhibitions, and the schedule of events for the Children's Multicultural Storytelling Festival, as well as listings of upcoming adult, teen, and children's programs at the Public Library. Serving the city since 1917, the main library located at Civic Center is open on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Tuesdays from 12 noon to 9 p.m. and Fridays from 12 to 6 p.m. The San Francisco History Room and Special Collections are open Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 1 to 6 p.m. Thursdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon, closed from noon to 1, and open again from 1 to 6 p.m. The main library offers a free orientation to the San Francisco Public Library System and the new online public access catalog every first Saturday of the month. The sessions run for an hour and provide a basic introduction to the library and its collections. Library orientations on the first Saturday of the month begin at 2 p.m. and take place in the Lurie Room of the main library. Times and schedules may change. Call 557-4400 for more information. While you're in the main library, take a trip to the Lurie Room each Thursday in October for free large screen video showings of travel near and far. Beginning on October 6th, Fodor's Guide to Mexico evokes the exotic sights and sounds of Mexico while describing its history, its customs, and travel accommodations. On October 13th, Journey to Canada for Quebec, A Whole Different World Next Door, Bonjour Quebec, a look at this most European of Canada's provinces. Also on October 13th, Natural Journey, Ontario. Explore the natural and historic sites of Ontario's many provincial parks. On October 20th, the Silk Road, a thousand kilometers beyond the Yellow River. Travel the ancient path followed by Marco Polo, linking China with Europe. Then on October 28th, travel to Australia, Secrets of the Land Down Under. From Sydney to the Great Barrier Reef, explore both cultural and natural distinctions of this vast country. Also on October 28th, New Zealand, the film. A look at all aspects of New Zealand life from wilderness to nightlife. So join us in the Lurie Room of the Main Library each Thursday at noon for travel near and far. The Noe Valley Sally Brunn Memorial Branch Library continues its classic cinema series this month 
with a screening of the 1922 silent horror classic Nosferatu the Vampire. Directed by F.W. Murnau, this early adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel was produced in Germany and features authentic location shooting. The director's sharp sense of composition achieves a mood of ghoulishness that even today is sure to make the skin crawl on seasoned horror fans. Max Schreck, as the vampire, creates a character that is no doubt one of the most loathsome looking characters in the history of cinema. This 16mm screening of Nosferatu the Vampire at the Noe Valley Sally Brun Memorial Branch Library takes place on October 19th at 7 p.m. The Noe Valley Sally Brun Memorial Branch Library is located at 451 Jersey Street between Castro and Diamond. Hours of operation are Tuesdays from 10 to 12 noon, closed for lunch, and open again from 1 to 6 p.m. Wednesday from 1 to 9 p.m. and Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 1 to 6 p.m. On Wednesday, October 26th at 7 p.m., the Sunset Branch Library will present a fascinating slide talk program on San Francisco's natural history. San Francisco native Greg Gar, a member of the Yerba Buena chapter of the California Native Plant Society, will present a slide talk featuring historic photos on the topic of San Francisco's natural history. The Sunset Branch is located on 1305 18th Avenue and is open to the public Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with evening hours on Wednesdays from 1 to 9 p.m. and Thursday and Friday afternoons from 1 to 6 p.m. The Children's Room is open on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays from 2 to 8 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And now, here's some news and notes of interest about the San Francisco Public Library System. Free guided tours of the main library in Civic Center are now available at 10.30 a.m. 
on the third Saturday of the month. This new Saturday tour is in addition to the tour scheduled for every third Wednesday of the month at 10.30 a.m. Tours begin at the welcome desk on the first floor of the main library and are led by a library volunteer. Included on the one-hour tour are introductions to each department in the main library, descriptions of the latest innovations and services available to patrons, and a brief history of the building, its architecture, and the artwork and exhibitions which are currently on display. Reservations for individuals are not necessary, but groups are advised to call to ensure space availability. For more information about tours or tour reservations, phone the library's volunteer services at 557-4280. International best-selling author Sidney Sheldon paid a visit to the main library last month to discuss and sign copies of his latest work, Nothing Lasts Forever. Mr. Sheldon proved to be an engaging public speaker who delighted the large audience of fans and well-wishers with his reflections on a long and varied career in the entertainment industry and insights into the writing process. When the war was over, I was ready to come back to Hollywood. But I wanted to come back with a story, and I had no ideas. And I sat down in the little apartment I lived in and wouldn't let myself get up until I got an idea. And at that time, I smoked, which was stupid. And I wanted a cigarette, but I wouldn't let myself get out of that chair. And I just sat there and sat there. And finally, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if an adult got mixed up with a bobby soxer? And she fell in love with him. And her sister was a judge and made him go with her, thinking that she would get over him. I thought, that might be fun. I got up and had a cigarette. I called the story suddenly in spring and went to Hollywood. David Selzig bought it and hired me to do the screenplay. One day he called me in his office. He said, I'm changing the name of Suddenly in Spring. And I said, to what, sir? And he said, The Bachelor and the Bobby Sox, sir. And because I knew a lot more than David Selznick, I said, nobody is going to ever see a movie called The Bastard of the Bobby Sons. <laughs> so we opened at Radio City Music Hall. It broke records. I got an Oscar. That's how much I knew. But that was the beginning. I went to MGM on a two-week guarantee, and I left there 12 years later as a writer, producer, director. And those were magic times. After the discussion, Mr. Sheldon signed copies of his new book, Nothing Lasts Forever, as a benefit to the library. This latest work, set in San Francisco, is a medical thriller confronting issues of medical ethics against the backdrop of the operating room and an explosive murder trial. Stay tuned to At the Public Library for information about future literary events happening throughout the library this fall. The San Francisco Public Library Commission meets on the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. in the Lurie Room of the Main Library. The Finance Committee of the Library Commission meets the third Tuesday of the month at 4 p.m. The Building and Facilities Committee meets the third Wednesday of the month at 3 p.m. And the Planning Committee meets the third Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. All San Francisco Public Library Commission meetings take place in the Lurie Room of the Main Library and are open to the public. For more information, phone 557-4233. And finally, this reminder, all San Francisco Public Libraries will be closed on Columbus Day, Monday, October 10th. The annual Multicultural Storytelling Festival will be held at San Francisco Public Libraries throughout the month of October, featuring dancing, storytelling, and puppet shows at 21 branch libraries. Lily Kai presents classical and folk dances from China on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. at the Ortega Branch Library, and on Thursday, October 13th at 3.30 p.m. at the Richmond Branch Library. Grupo Folklorico de San Francisco performs traditional folk dances of Mexico in the main children's department on Saturday, October 8th at 2.30 p.m. and in the Bernal Branch Library on Saturday, October 22nd at 2 p.m. 
Annalise J. Kunkel tells German tales on Saturday, October 22nd at 1.30 p.m. in the Noe Valley Branch Library. Olga Loya with tales from the native peoples of the Americas on Tuesday, October 4th at 3.30 p.m. at the Bayview Wadden Branch Library. And on Tuesday, October 25th at 9.30 a.m. in the Eureka Valley Branch Library. And at 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, October 25th at the Excelsior Branch Library. For more Native American tales, Johnny Moses will be at the Anza Branch Library on Tuesday, October 18th at 3 p.m. and at the North Beach Library on Wednesday, October 19th at 3.45 p.m. The Poor Puppet Theater performs Greek shadow puppet shows on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. at the Parkside Branch Library. Then on Wednesday, October 12th at 7 p.m. at the Merced Branch Library. On Wednesday, October 19th at 7.30 p.m., they'll be at the Mission Branch Library. On Saturday, October 22nd at 4 p.m. at the West Portal Branch Library. And finally, at the Glen Park Reading Center on Wednesday, October 26th at 7 p.m. Belinda Sullivan tells African American tales at the Ingleside Reading Center on Wednesday, October 19th at 9.30 a.m. Then at the Visitation Valley Reading Center on Wednesday, October 19th at 10.30 a.m. And at the Ocean View Reading Center on Thursday, October 20th at 10.30 a.m. And Clara Yen tells Chinese tales on Tuesday, October 25th at 10.30 a.m. at the Sunset Branch Library. And on Tuesday, October 25th at 3.30 p.m at the Marina Branch Library. Every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m., the Main Library Children's Department hosts the Chess Club for children of all ages. International, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, and Korean chess are offered, as well as Go and Scrabble. That's the Chess Club in the Main Children's Department at the Main Library every Friday at 3 p.m. Check out this list of children's programs and events at the San Francisco Public Libraries throughout the month of October, and stay tuned for the Halloween events next. At the Bernal Heights Branch Library, story time for two-year-olds and over on October 1st, 8th, and 29th, all at 2 p.m. Challenge Chess for all ages, October 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Preschool Films for ages 3 to 5 on October 18th at 10.15 a.m. And a film program for all ages on October 19th at 7.15 p.m. Come to the Ingleside Reading Center on Tuesday, October 4th at 10.15 a.m. for a preschool story time and craft program for children ages 3 to 5. And at the Sunset Branch on October 4th, Heather Pearl Cromie brings Yo-Yo the Clown to the library for ages 2 to 5 at 10.30 a.m. Then on Tuesday, October 18th, preschool films for ages 3 to 5 at 10.30 a.m., 11.15 a.m., and 1.30 p.m. And on Wednesday, October 19th at 7 p.m., a video program for children ages 6 and older. The Visitation Valley Branch will be having a preschool story time for children ages 3 to 5 on October 5th at 10 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. And on October 12th, a preschool video program for 3 to 5-year-olds at 10 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Also on October 12th, a video program for 6-year-olds and over at 3.30 p.m. The Ocean View Branch will be having a preschool story time for three to five-year-olds on October 6th at 10.30 a.m. And a video program for six-year-olds and over on October 13th at 3.30 p.m. 
and the main library will be showing preschool films for ages 3 to 5 on October 19th at 10 and again at 10.45 a.m. And on October 20th, preschool films for ages 3 to 5 at 10 and 10.45 a.m. and 2 p.m. And videos for 6-year-olds and over at 4 p.m. The Marina Branch Library will have a preschool video program for 3 to 5-year-olds on October 11th at 10.30 a.m. And on October 19th, BATS for children of all ages. Christine Scott of the California Bat Conservation Fund will display and talk about bats and their importance in the environment. That's October 19th at 3.30 p.m. And don't forget Halloween at the library. At the Ingleside Reading Center, they'll be having Halloween crafts and preschool story time on October 20th at 10.30 a.m. Then on October 25th at the Ingleside Reading Center, they'll have Halloween crafts for six-year-olds and over at 3.30 p.m. And the Visitation Valley Reading Center will be having a Halloween crafts program for ages 3 to 5 on October 26th at 10 and 10.45 a.m. And then again at 3.30 p.m. for six-year-olds and over. Then come by the Ocean View Reading Center on October 27th at 10.30 in the morning for a Halloween crafts program for ages 3 to 5. And later that afternoon, ages 6 and older will come for Halloween crafts at 3.30 p.m. Finally, on October 27th at the Main Library, Halloween crafts and story time at 4 p.m. Join us Halloween at the library. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children's Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages, English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 626-6516. For Spanish stories, dial 552-0535. And for Cantonese stories, dial 552-0534. Now here's a sampling of some Dial-A-Story fun. Thank you for calling Dial-A-Story, presented by Children's Services, San Francisco Public Library. Our story today is, What Was I Scared Of? by Dr. Seuss, from the Sneetches and Other Stories. Well, I was walking in the night, and I saw nothing scary, for I have never been afraid of anything, not very. Then I was deep within the woods, when suddenly I spied them. I saw a pair of pale green pants with nobody inside them. I wasn't scared, but yet I stopped. What could those pants be there for? What could a pair of pants at night be standing in the air for? And then they moved, those empty pants. They kind of started jumping. And then my heart, I must admit, it kind of started thumping. So I got out. I got out fast, as fast as I could go, sir. I wasn't scared, but pants like that? I did not care for, no sir. After that, a week went by, then one dark night in Greenwich, I had to do an errand there and fetch some Greenwich spinach. Well, I had fetched my spinach and I was walking back through town when those pants raced round a corner and they almost knocked me down. I lost my Greenwich spinach, but I didn't even care. I ran for home. Believe me, I had really had a scare. Now, bicycles were never made for pale green pants to ride them, especially spooky pale green pants with nobody inside them. And the next night, I went fishing for doubt trout on Roover River. When those pants came rowing toward me, well, I started in to shiver. And by now, I was so frightened that I'll tell you, but I hate to, I screamed and rowed away and lost my hook and line and bait, too. I ran and found a brickle bush and hid myself away. I got brickles in my britches, but I stayed there anyway. I stayed all night. The next night, too, I'd be there still, no doubt. But I had to do an errand, so the next night, I went out. I had to do an errand, had to pick a peck of snide in a dark and gloomy snide field that was almost nine miles wide. I said, I do not fear those pants with nobody inside them. I said and said and said those words. I said them, but I lied them. Then I reached inside a snide bush, and the next thing that I knew, I felt my hand touch someone, and I'll bet that you know who. And there I was, caught in the snide, and in that dreadful place, those spooky empty pants and I were standing face to face. 
I yelled for help. I screamed. I shrieked. I howled. I yelled. I cried. Oh, save me from those pale green pants with nobody inside. <gasps> but then a strange thing happened. Those pants began to cry. Those pants began to tremble. They were just as scared as I. I never heard such whimpering, and I began to see that I was just as strange to them as they were strange to me. I put my arm around their waist and sat right down beside them. I calmed them down, poor empty pants, with nobody inside them. And now we meet quite often, those empty pants and I, and we never shake or tremble. We both smile and we say, hi. And that was the story of What Was I Scared Of by Dr. Seuss. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Goodbye. When it's time to decide what to do with your life, knowledge is power. Use it. Child psychiatrist. Fashion designer. A police officer. A nerd. Cybernetic engineer. Fireman. Legal secretary. An astronaut. The library has all of your need to get you where you want to be at the library. Knowledge, power, use it. I just want to be myself, you know. The library, knowledge, power, use it. Who killed Reed Tomes? Was it a lot of books? Dusty Schulf? SF Branch. If you're between the ages of 11 and 14, you can be a detective and help us solve the murder mystery at the library. Come to the Sunset Branch, Wednesday, October 12th at 7 p.m. Or the North Beach Branch, Wednesday, October 26th at 7.30 p.m. So be a detective. Come and help us solve the murder mystery at the library. If you want to sharpen your homework skills, you could come to the West Portal Branch Wednesday, October 19th at 3.30 p.m. or the Ortega Branch Saturday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. So come to the public library this fall where there are lots of programs for teens. Looking for a great deal on books? Then drop by the Book Bay Bookstore in Fort Mason. Operated by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, the Book Bay Bookstore offers great prices on used books, records, and tapes. There's something for everybody at the Book Bay, and all proceeds of the Book Bay benefit the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. The Book Bay Bookstore is located in the Fort Mason Complex, Building C, on the first floor. The store is open Wednesdays and Fridays from 11 to 5, Thursdays 11 to 8, and Saturdays and Sundays again from 11 to 5. The Book Bay also welcomes donations of books. If you have books you'd like to donate, call the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257 for more information. So, now you know, that's Bargain Books at the Book Bay Bookstore, Fort Mason, Building C. Welcome to City Watch, San Francisco's government access television channel. Hello, I'm Supervisor Kevin Shelley. The city has taken advantage of this free channel space to provide and distribute government programming of interest to San Franciscans. We hope these programs will inform, educate, and enlighten, as well as encourage participation in government services, activities, and decision making. San Francisco joins with many other cities in California and across the nation in making full use of this tremendous resource government access cable television. Thank you for watching City Watch. And now, back to more at the Public Library, here on Cable 54, City Watch. Library patrons in many of the branches are now meeting to discuss favorite pieces of literature. Titles change regularly, 
and more branches are joining in all the time. Here's the schedule for the month of October. The Sunset Branch will be discussing Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. The Sunset Branch is located at 1305 18th Avenue. Hours are Mondays, Tuesdays, and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays, 1 to 9 p.m., and Thursdays and Fridays, 1 to 6 p.m. Also on October 5th, the Western Edition branch meets at 7.30 p.m. to discuss a selection of writings by author Brian Moore, who wrote No Other Life, The Lonely Passion of Judith Hearn, and others. The Western Edition branch is located at 1550 Scott Street. Their hours are Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 to 6, Wednesdays, 1 to 9, and Thursdays and Fridays, 1 to 6. On Wednesday, October 19th at 7 p.m., the Sunset Branch Group will discuss Death Comes for the Archbishop by Willa Cather. The following Wednesday, October 26th, at 7.30 p.m., join in a discussion of Milan Kundera's Immortality at the Noe Valley Sally Brunn Branch, located on 451 Jersey Street. The Noe Valley Library hours are Tuesdays, 10 to 12 and 1 to 6, Wednesdays, 1 to 9, and Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 1 to 6 p.m. Finally, on Thursday, October 27th, the Bernal Heights branch is holding an afternoon discussion of Othello by Shakespeare at 4 p.m. The Bernal Heights branch library is located at 500 Cortland Avenue. Their open hours are Tuesdays 10 to 12 and 1 to 6, Wednesdays 1 to 9, and Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays 1 to 6 p.m. Check a print copy of At the Public Library under the Literary Programs and Events heading for information on book discussion groups in a neighborhood branch near you. North Beach resident Judith Robinson, author of The Hearsts, An American Dynasty, reads from her newly released biography of Philip Burton, Your In Your Mother's Arms, The Life and Legacy of Congressman Philip Burton. The reading will be on Wednesday, October 19th at 7 p.m. at the North Beach Branch Library, located at 2000 Mason Street at Columbus. And as part of our continuing author series at the main library, award-winning author Tilly Olson will make a rare public appearance on Saturday, October 29th at 3 p.m. in the San Francisco Main Library's Lurie Room to read from a fiction work in progress. Olson's presentation at the library is free and open to the public, courtesy of the author. The event will include questions from the audience and a book signing will follow. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557 4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one to one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. Three major exhibitions are currently being held in the main library in the Civic Center. Let's take a look first at the third floor. My name is Andrea Grimes. I'm Special Collections Librarian of the San Francisco Public Library. Every year, the Handbook Binders of California hold a members exhibition. And this year, the San Francisco Public Library is pleased to host 
their 22nd annual members exhibition on the third floor of the main library through October 31st. Today, two accomplished handbook binders, Dominic Riley and John Demerit, will take you on a tour of the exhibition. The Handbook Binders of California was founded in 1972 by a group of local uh, bookbinders who are interested in preserving the, the craft. And we've been going for 22 years. This is our 22nd ex exhibition. And I'm Dominic Riley. This is John Demerit. We're going to be showing you around some of the books, starting from here. There are nine cases. We're going to take out some of the ones that are interesting or quirky or we think are some of the nicest books in the exhibition. Um, John's going to start off looking at Jill Torlow's book. And I'll tell you a bit about John first. Uh, he works at Tourist Book Bindery in Berkeley. And he's a master box maker, edition binder. Um, even binds a couple of theses now and again. Itinerant hack merchant. Hack merchant. Yeah. Kind of person that a lot of handbook binders look down on, but we embrace all sorts in our organization. Yeah. And, um, at least in public we do. That's true. Um, John's going to start off. And we're going to look at Jill's. We're going to actually take the book out of the case. Yeah, several of our favorites we'll take out of the case. There's 36 books total. I think there's 36. And uh, we'll start with Jill Tarlow's book first. Uh, okay, let's take it out. Right, this is the first book of our exhibition. It's been by a French binder named Jill Tarlow. She's a long-standing member of handbook mm -hmm. binder. She works primarily in Paris. She's done a book here in uh, ostrich skin, of all things. Ostrich skin. Yeah, feel that. I don't know if you can see this here, but it is a, quite an uh, unusual texture here on part of the skin. She's used The interesting thing about this book is all the elaborate, uh, unique skins she's used here. And, uh, would, you, would you call this enlay? Yes, enlay. And I call, think I'd call this applique, since she is French, and that's a French word. And this leather with gold sort of decoration over it, this is a, a sort of... Um, orange leather with gold stripes, it's extraordinary. Yeah, the interesting, and the tooling she had done by a, in the French style, she had someone else do the tooling. Oh, she did? Yes. That's a, that's a typically French Simple thing. French. Yeah. yeah. And she's duplicated the pattern on the back. I, I like this folder very much. Yeah. That, that's actually called a chemise down Oh, there. this, what's that? Yeah, chemise is what a, it's a folder that wraps around. <laughs> Oh, it does. wraps around the book. Oh, that's good, look. Isn't you see? that something? You have to protect these things, you know. Can you show them that? You see, interestingly also, it, the, it's sculpted. Take the, uh, take the pattern, that's amazing. It looks like styrofoam, but it's really leather. And it all goes into this rather nice slipcase. Right. Should we put it away? Yeah. Bye, Joe. Boy, it fits like a glove. Amazing. Uh, the next book that we have out of our case is a book bound by Paula Gorley, who is, teaches the bookbinding and book arts program at the University of Alabama. And uh, the interesting thing about this book is that it's bound in alligator skin. Is it really? Yeah, you want to touch it? Yeah. yeah. Ah, it bit me. Oh. Look at that. We better put it back in its cage. I think we had. Lock it up. Right. Yeah, it's got a little gate there. It won't harm anyone anymore. And it's out of harm's way. Good. This is Dominic Riley, fine craft binder, practicing his craft in Berkeley. Dominic and I first met three years ago working at Taurus Book Binder. That's right. A very strange combination of uh, skills, I would say. The old and the new. Yeah. Dominic studied binding at the London College of Printing, where he received his degree in book conservation. Fine craft book fine conservation. Fine craft binding. I think that's what it was called. It doesn't really mean much. Since then, Dominic's gone on to open his own shop in Berkeley, and he also is uh, becoming quite a well-known teacher. Mm. As, as is John, actually, as I must John. say. John's box-making classes are raising eyebrows all over Northern California. Yeah, they're hit. Yeah. And in, in Dominic's hot little hand, he has a, one of his more uh, luxurious uh, design bindings. It's well, yeah, it's, um, I did this three years ago in London, and um, it's the most extraordinary thing about it, probably, is that it's covered in sheet latex and it sort of sticks to your hands, it's very clammy. It, uh, you can sweat on it and wipe it down with a damp cloth afterwards. It's already got dirty marks in now where yeah. I've been holding it. it. Sticks to your face. Um, and it, it's, it's sheet latex, which if you were able to smell it at home, mm, smell that. Mm. It's chocolate. It smells like chocolate. It smells like chocolate. And feel that. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's felt. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it is felt. It is felt. Yeah. An extraordinary thing. Um, when I exhibited it in London, the woman who was curating the exhibition said it was the most disgusting book she'd ever seen, so I thought it only 
it's there to share it with people share here. Share it again. We're going to put it back now and look at another book in the case. Alberta Mischke's, she's a new member of the ours. first time member. Yeah, and this book is called Water Dreams. It's a sort of what you might call a book arts project in contrast to the books we've shown already. It's a series of different kinds of bookbinding styles, all of which fit into this rather interesting face box, which is the box on top there with this title Water Dreams on it. So we have a little accordion binding on the right at the bottom. Next to it. Three-sided folio binding. Mm, like it makes a sort of triptych effect there yeah. with these um, titled label pieces sort of hanging down on threads. Right. Above it, in front of the face box, is a, what looks like a single section case binding with a black spine with the title in little right. rings on top. There was a very large piece of tape stuck to that book. Um, was it really? Yeah. What, was that a mistake? Yes, it was a mistake. I had to pull it off during the reception. Oh, that's embarrassing. With Alberta looking on. That wouldn't have happened if I was creating the show. Mm. And over on the left, that tall, thin book, which says Dream Number One, I think, is again a single section, sort of pamphlet style, very tall. Right. And um, there it goes, all bound in a rather interesting linen book cloth. And it all fits very neatly and slug snugly into the face mm. For a, For a first um, exhibitor, it's a good piece of work. Right. Just when you thought that John had never bound a book, here it is. And he's going to tell us about it. Right. The reason I have it open to this page is uh, this was one of the, the pictures that I used to incorporate into the binding what I did my first foray into uh, using a computer. I, I took this to a, a pre-press computer shop and I had them scan this, this particular image here into the computer. And then we, we cleaned up the background on it. I had them give me a, a hard copy, a linotronic output of it, which I then took to our an, an engravers, and I had a magnesium dye made of this image after I reduced it a sm small bit. And with that, I was able to foil stamp that image onto the cover of the book. So I was able to incorporate the text into the book. No, it means nothing to me. But it's interesting because John's contribution to the show represents a part of binding which is not often seen in uh, exhibitions of hand binding, which is um, the trade, trade techniques binding. that have been used to produce this book, which we really need to see more of because it's a very important part of the story. Mm -hmm. And here is his sword tooth box, which as you can see slides off like this in a very intriguing way. Very nice fabric too. And yeah. what goes to bed now? Let's see if we can get it closed. Yeah, let's see if we can. There you go. Nice little Inspired thing. by the C's candy box. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite flavor of book? Oh, chocolate covered cherry. Mm, mine's Turkish delight. Yeah. And the next book in our, sh in our little tour is another fine, fine book by Eleanor Ramsey, our local hero. And this is really a, a must hear book. Uh, you can see that it has incredibly detailed uh, tooling work on the inside of this coffin. It's Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe, of course. So talk about a bit about the materials on there. That's a, a, a dark gray calf skin, or goat skin in yeah. the background. The skeleton is made of white box calf, I think. Two rubies mm -hmm. for the eyes, and I think a bit of snake skin for the snake. It's yeah. quite incredible, with and gold of, tooling yeah, around. And a bit of silk on the, the uh, walls of the coffin. And, but r r really, the, the most fabulous uh, attribute of this book is the sound effects. It's loaded with a spring on the door of the coffin that has a ratchet effect when you open and close the coffin. Yeah. Wonderful. This is something quite different altogether. This is by Dan Flanagan, who's actually the conservator here at the Public Library, and it's a historical model. It's a sort of facsimile reproduction of a Belgian book of hours from 1300. It's very small. Made the clasp himself. Yeah, he has a nice clasp that he made. This pops open. Books were always held together with clasps um, during this period. Yeah. What um, do you think the boards are made out of? This board? It's wood. It's a wooden board. Yeah. That's very interesting. Ooh. He's done some decoration on here with a tool. And it's what we call a tight back, which means that the leather is stuck directly to the back of the spine so that it moves as the book opens. It's very flexible. Dan loves to do that with his books when he shows them to us. Mm. See? You couldn't do that with a 19th century book. It wouldn't take that strain. So it's a wonderful style of binding. And you can fit it into your pocket.
Right. right. Next book. Next book. Next book is a, also by a new member, Susan Mills, mm. whose address is in New York, but I think she does most of her work in Nova Scotia. And the sort of uh, interesting thing about this book is it's it's uh, someone with a Coptic stitch, which is uh, all the rage these days. Yeah, the Coptic binding, of course, it was the earliest form of codex binding. A codex is, is simply a book that's made of folded mm -hmm. sections stitched together. So you can see the this exposed, is, yeah. unsupported sewing. It's got a beautiful exposed stitch. Yeah, this is how books were bound in the third century. And the main attraction to this book is that it opens completely flat. Plexiglass cover, covered with handmade paper. Because there's no support on the spine, there's no lining of paper or any kind of cloth, it opens beautifully flat. More Latin, charta linea. I don't know what that means. Mm. I think it means straight lines. Maybe we should ask Eleanor. Yes. Some wonderful see-through, you see? You can see my hand through there. Wonderful, Good simple book. book. Yeah. Lovely colors and textures. Good. I think I have it upside down. Now. I think you do. So what about this one? Don't you think now? Yeah, it's awfully small. You want to pick it up? I'll pick it up. Right. Here we go. Look at this. This is an accordion book by Pat Baldwin, who works in Bisbee, Arizona. And this is her first electronically produced edition binding, which means she's done several hundred of these. And it's pictures of Shakespeare. It's called the Shakespeare Dilemma. And all these, all these pictures of Shakespeare were done on the color printer. And you see, it's an accordion binding with occasional sections in the middle. Yeah. Sections of text. It's wonderful. It's bound in leather. leather. And it has this great clasp-like wrapper, which is a chemically treated piece of copper. Would you call it a chemise? I would call it, yeah, a wrap. Stole. A stole, an outer garment generally, for the book. I would call it an incunable, a swaddling cloth of the book. Patina. And there it is. It's a wonderful, tight little thing. Yours for $115. Isn't this nice? Yeah, I wonder who made that book. Well, I'll let you into a secret. It was me again. Mm. Right. <laughs> this is the Dominic Riley book binding show. Um, and this is a, another historical model of a 12th century English wooden boarded, that is to say, Romanesque binding. The book, I've cut away so you can see some of the structure. These are the thongs that it was sewn on. They're bashed in with these dowels. Like that in these channels. This is a piece of oak, which interestingly was, before it was on this book, it was part of the shop front at Liberty's in London. And this is a piece of hide. And these headbands come from a time when books used to be displayed, or rather stored, in cases, four edge down. And the headbands helped you to, to pull it out. Lift it out. Yeah. What about these ornaments here? Oh yeah, these are if you can see these, these are woodcuts. Each one of these is a piece of wood with um, a design cut into it with a, with a, with a stylus. And the leather is dampened, and then the wood goes into the leather, and the leather gets sucked up into the hole made by the stylus. It's completely the reverse of modern yeah. gold tooling, which you is done by putting leather into the, a yeah. uh, uh, metal tool into the leather. You call that like a debossed effect? Yeah, it's a debossing effect, yeah. Um, another nice thing about this book is that it's very solid, it swivels round like the other one we saw, and it makes a terrific noise when it closes. Shocking, huh? Yeah, scary. Would you like to put it back? I would. Uh, the next book we have is done uh, by our favorite bookbinder, Robert Rosenzweig, who's also the president of Hand Bookbinders of California. Yes, hail our president. Hail Bob. Bob. Uncle Bob, we like to call him. Mm. It's done a beautiful book here by Yates, The Poetry of Yates, printed by Andrew Hoyam over at the Arion Press. Uh, Bob has used some very interesting leathers that I think he got from a, a tannery called Harmatons. Mm, I think it's a harmaton, yeah. Yeah, it's a, a goat skin. Mm -hmm. And it's got some very unusual, I suppose this was some dyeing done uh, after the tanning process. Mm, I think so. Yeah, and Bob just, he saw it and he had to have it. And then he had to bind a book in it. And we had to display it because he's our president. Right. And here, 
is also some interesting things. Edge decoration. When the book is sewn before it has its boards put on, it's clamped, yeah, clamped in the press and sanded, and then you can paint on this just like it was a, a block of wood. Also the head the headband. Band. Bob's done a really nice job of incorporating the colors of the leather yeah. into the entire book block. A triple headband, and inside, this is his leather jointed end paper, a suede doubleur, and this Another suede paste suede. down. It's great, with a thin line of uh, um, terracotta goat skin around it. The whole thing is, is a very beautiful... Very nice design. Yeah. Well done, Bob. Well done, Bob, yeah. Uh, now, the last book we're going to show you is by our friend Michelle Furman Danner, and we felt kind of bad because this was a book she designed while she was studying at the Bennett Street School of Boston, which is a very well very well known book arts program. Yeah. And, book, and fine book binding too. Fine binding and conservation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michelle now works uh, part time at UC Berkeley at the Doe Library with Jillian Bowl, and she also works part time up in uh, Davis with Wendy Jones. Bancroft. The Bancroft? Yes. UC Berkeley. Excuse me. No, it's all right. It's just, you know, I'm particular about my library. Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, we felt like we sort of. Uh, gave Michelle a short end of the bargain for this show because yeah. she designed this book at the Bennett Street School as a series of photographs that ideally would be walking around. So I wanted to give people Perfect. full effect. Let's take a walk around Boston Harbor. Yeah. This is where they threw those um, beams into the harbour, was it? Mm -hmm. During that war, was it? Mm -hmm. So those was king? Yeah, English, I think the English were involved in it. Oh, was it? Really? Oh. Well, that just about wraps up our tour for the day. We hope that you've enjoyed seeing these books that we've chosen to show you from the 22nd Annual Exhibition of the Handbook Bands of California. We're sorry we couldn't show you everything that's in our exhibition this year, but we're here at the San Francisco Public Library Special Collections on the third floor of the library at the Civic Center, so please come down, have a look at the books for yourselves. And now, from John DeMerid and Dominic Riley, goodbye from the San Francisco Public Library, and we'll see you next year. Thanks. Also currently on exhibit on the third floor of the main library are the botanical prints of Henry Evans. Part of the Robert Grabhorn collection on the history of printing and the development of the book, these are original examples of Evans' unique style and technique. Henry Evans was a self-taught printer, botanist, and artist who began making botanical prints in 1958. The state flowers were all drawn from live subjects onto linoleum print blocks. Evans then carved the image, mounted it onto wood, and printed it using a Washington hand press. This exhibit will be on display through October 31st on the third floor of the main library. And finally, now through December 29th, in the main library's second floor rotunda, it's 25 Plus, a retrospective exhibition of the work of poet performer Ruth Weiss and artist Paul Blake. Twenty Five Plus, Ruth Weiss, Paul Blake, work and image interplay. Born in Berlin in 1928, Ruth Weiss is the author of several small press poetry books. She innovated the mixing of poetry with jazz during the late 50s at the cellar in North Beach and has been described as the beat scene's matriarch. She's also a filmmaker producing The Brink in 1961. Artist Paul Blake was born in New York and grew up in Los Angeles by the sea and came to San Francisco after finishing art school. His cover designs have been published in various poetry magazines. The exhibition is the culmination of the pair's 25 plus years of collaboration and features books, poetry journals, broadsides, photographs, and other items from more than 25 years together. 
Materials for the exhibit came from the library's special collections department and other sources. 25 Plus, Ruth Weiss, Paul Blake, now through December 29th on the second floor of the main library. The San Francisco Public Library's services for the deaf and hearing impaired are located on the second floor of the main library in the Civic Center. Staffed with personnel fluent in American Sign Language, the services for the deaf and hearing impaired contain numerous resources for and about the deaf and hearing impaired. Deaf services may be reached via TTD at phone number 557-4433 or voice phone at 557-4434. Hours of operation are Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays from 12 noon to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays noon to 9 p.m. City guides are volunteers who enjoy the city and its stories. Let them share their knowledge and enthusiasm with you on free walking tours of various San Francisco locations. Call 557-4266 for more information on free public tours of San Francisco. You too can be a friend, a friend of the San Francisco Public Library. Join us. For more information, phone the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257. We'd like to hear what you think of At the Public Library. Please send your comments to San Francisco Public Library, Media Production Services, Civic Center, San Francisco, California, 94102. You've been watching At the Public Library here on cable channel 54, City Watch. At the Public Library features news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. And for a printed copy of some of the information in this program, pick up a copy of At the Public Library at your branch or at the main library. Tune in next time for more At the Public Library, and thanks for watching. <laughs>